everybody, it's Sam and Lisa Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is a uh, DIY photo album or scrapbooking album. Um, it's come about by complete accident. Basically, I was printing off a load of um, these beautiful papers, so this print and this print here. And for some reason, the printer just chucked out loads and I turned it off. I left it for like an hour, turned it back on. It was still stuck in the memory, I couldn't cancel it. I went into the settings, you name it, I tried. It chucked out page after page after page and I think in the end there was about 18 pages of this particular print, this one here. I love it, but I was gonna get sick of it. So <laughs> I thought I'm gonna put it into some, just one project um, because I just would never have used all those separate pages. And um, like I said, I would have got fed up with the print in the end and I didn't want that to be the case. So this album is basically has these matted pages with this print on it. So um, you may have prints, you know, multiple prints the same. So it'd be great for that. You don't have to put print on the pages. You can keep them plain. And then obviously whatever you're using to scrapbook with or the photos, you can obviously add your color and print to those. Um, but um, that's why I've done this project for this reason. <laughs> so um, yeah, lots and lots of paper used for this one. Um, but if you've got lots of old papers, lots of, you know, mix, you can kind of really mash up the prints and the colors. You can really do whatever you want with this. Um, I've also used the laminator. So the top um, page here is laminated along with the back one here. So it's really protected keeps everything nice. Um, also I've used these wonderful um, printed vellum um, sheets in between each page to protect the pictures. So if there's photographs on here, they won't stick to this glossy side here. And also on the pages inside here, if you've got pictures on here and on this side, if you didn't have the vellum, they would stick together. So the vellum sheet in between just stops that happening. But I got them, so it's this huge bumper pack here literally there is tons i'm guessing that you can see how thick it is and that's vellum the vellum is very thin i'm guessing there's at least 100 sheets here and every five is a different print so i've got some lovely script writing there i've got poems um i've got butterflies i've got other butterflies i've got dragonflies i've got flowers i've got swells i've got champagne popping um, music notes everything is in there but i don't know who it's by so if anybody has purchased this, because this is the original packaging it comes in, and you can see there's the hooked, the hook that would, you know, would have hung from in the craft shop. I paid 450 for all of this, which I think is an absolute steal for the amount of vellum that's in here. Usually you get 10 sheets of vellum for that price or sometimes more. So I'd love to know if anybody has this or recognizes the prints and knows who's done it. That'd be great because I'd like to put the links in my blog. Um, and that's that. That's just another sheet of this paper here. I might make a card with this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is what we're going to be making. Like I said, perfect for scrapbooking, um, you know, or just using as a normal, you know, photo album. So let's crack on and make it. Okay, so you're going to need a lot of card. So as I mentioned, this is kind of an accidental project. It wasn't something I was planning to do, but I'm really pleased with um, what's coming together. So I've already done, you know, a big bulk of it because again, you don't need to watch me. Um, stick everything down. So I'm going to talk you through these pieces here. So you, first of all, you're going to need, if I, I'm just following my list of my measurements, what I wrote down. So first of all, the vellum. So these vellum sheets here, these measure seven and seven eighths of an inch by eight and three quarters, and you need seven pieces of vellum. Now all of this will be listed in my blog as normal, okay? So don't worry if you don't want to write it all down now. So that's your vellum sheets. Then the pattern paper, so this crazy print that I've got tons of, you're gonna need 13 pieces of seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters, so just squared in size there, in shape even. Um, then the white card, so the main, you know, um, base of the, the album, including your lid and your back piece, this is going to measure nine by eight. Okay, so that's everything there. So what I'm going to do, while I've got the scoreboard here, I'll talk through that back bit in a minute. Get your um, laminator on. I've got mine just on the go here. So if you hear a slight humming sound, that's what it is. Um, that's my lid, which is already done. So you will have 
uh, how many pieces did I just say? Eight pieces of this nine by eight card, okay? What you want to do is along the longest side, you want to score at one inch, okay? Just like so. So go along and do that on all of them apart from the back piece. Because it's the back, you want it to stay just completely flat so it just keeps that nice strong um, structure just so it keeps your um, album you know nice and flat so this is the back piece that I've already done and I've already laminated this so this is just your nine by eight laminated now also what I've put on the back here is a piece of patterned um, card just so it looks nice and on the very back I've put nothing I mean if you want to stamp who it's made by you might want to put another nice quote on the back you can do so before you obviously um, laminate that otherwise um, I've put this pattern paper on the back just giving myself a nice frame I don't actually think I've done the measurement of that one so let me just roughly here oh it's eight and three quarters by um, seven and seven eighths Okay, that's that back piece there. Run it through your laminating machine and then I'll tell you about the hole punching in a minute, but that's the back piece there. So you'll get everything prepped. You've got all of these scored. Then what you want to do is with all of your pieces here of seven by three fours, you want to start sticking them down. Obviously, if they're directional, make sure you've got it facing up the right way. Um, basically, get rid of this now because I don't need it. Um, mine will sit nicely within that because we've scored at one inch along that nine inch side this is now an eight by eight square so this here which is seven and three quarters squared will sit perfectly inside and just give you a nice little white edge again once you see how i'm putting this all together it's very easy to adapt change you can add you can take away there's just so many ways to do this um i'm this is just how I'm doing it because I've got all this paper. Um, what you could also do, which is another nice touch, and this is kind of evolved from more of a, a, an old style album that we've got in the house, you could um, have your paper say, so it's that, I don't know, what would that be? Maybe six by, um, not six, sorry, whatever this length is. Imagine that bit here on my right hand side isn't there. You could then have this to be somewhere where you want to write little quotes about the picture that you maybe stick here. So um, you could keep this plain if you wanted to. And alternatively, you can keep them all plain and then scrapbook them with, with obviously whatever you want to do. So like I said, lots and lots of ways to do this. So I'm going to first of all just get this. I'm just using a very, very thin layer of my um, glue here. And I'm really not squeezing very much out. I'm actually blocking the nib um, so it's flush with the bottom of the, um, you know, the paper here. So it's just a really thin amount coming out and it's just enough to tack it down in place really. Um, if you want to use obviously red tape you can do but then that will leave a little bit of a lump and stuff so it's entirely up to you. Just something that's going to obviously secure it strongly which this does. This certainly won't budge once it's stuck down. So I'm just going to stick this one on here. Again like I said give you that nice border like so okay and then the next one you see you'll flip this over and then it will go on this side so that's creating your page so that then when you turn that over that's what you will have because this is obviously what's attached with the ribbon like so so flip it over and I'm just going to stick okay, this so one that, down that's my page down there so burnish that and go along and burnish um, all of the others and you want to do that on all of your remaining white pieces bearing in mind that you're other piece that you're not scoring will have this on or be completely plain it's entirely up to you so now we want to start putting it together which is really really easy so I've already done this bit here which has already got the vellum all in between each page um, so this one is going to go on top and then it's going to have the vellum sandwiched in between here so just check what one I had there so that's a dragonfly so I want to change it up a bit so I'll put this flower one in next so the vellum, um, so that was seven and seven eighths of an inch by eight and three quarters. Basically, I've done it so that it will overhang your patterned paper by literally a few millimetres, um, but it won't overhang the actual main white card. I didn't want to do it the same 
um, measurement as the white card because everybody's trimmers are different. You know, if you're cutting by hand, all kinds of things, you may be out on one of the sides and by the time, you know, you've done them all, you're just gonna have bits sticking out. So I thought this way, it's all concealed and it's all hidden inside. And that's kind of how they are anyway. So I think it'll look really nice. So um, what you wanna do actually before you stick all this down is you'll need to make your hole punched holes. So these ones here, I measured down two inches Okay, and then just come in so it's in the center. I'm just using the normal standard size hole punch. So coming in two, two inches and two inches, go into the middle and hole punch, okay? Then grab your you know next piece, sit that over the top, and then hole punch again. And that way you know that you're getting your hole punches exactly you know, in the same position. Because if you were to measure and do two inches down, you could be just a slightly bit out each time. And before you know it, all your circles are slightly out. If you use just one bit of card and use that as your template for all of them, then your holes will be in exactly the same place. Okay, so all of your white pieces will have holes in them. Grab your piece of vellum and you're gonna stick this in here. I haven't burnished the vellum, you don't need to because they're very loose pages. But again, you just wanna pop your glue. You can pop it all the way covering all this surface area. Go around your hole punched holes. Again, if you want to use red tape, you can. It would just take a long time. So just get a good glue. I always use the Alina's tacky glue. Never had any problems with it. My projects don't fall apart. It's a good all rounder. You just don't want to go use too much of it because there is water in it. Okay, then pop your vellum down again. Because you're using the wet glue, you've got that wiggle room. So it's nice. You can spend some time getting it exactly where you want it. Okay, now I'm putting this on top of obviously all of my pieces here, so my um, I've got a bit more to punch through, but basically let that dry a little bit longer than I have, but you can just run your um, hole punch through here, and again, you can just punch. I can get this one on, because it's getting thick. Like so. It does come through there, it's a little bit wet, but I just want to show you quickly there for the video. Okay, and just hole punch that. And again, I'll just okay, do the other just one. Just kind of pull out any bits you get. Your ribbon's gonna sit in here. You can tidy up your circles a bit there, just with a pokey tool, you can just run that through there a bit. Okay, so that is your vellum on top. Then you get your white piece, and you're gonna sit that on top. The hole's already punched with this one, so literally as you sit that over, you can see there, it perfectly all meets up and all of this is all lined up and the vellum isn't sticking out. So again, I'm then gonna put some glue and again, you don't, you know, you don't need a huge amount, just a thin layer. Now this time I'm covering that whole one inch by eight, so all the way down, I wanna get it but right But the ribbon the will always keep it together so it won't actually physically fall apart. So, but I just think this is tidy. You don't, if you don't wanna do this bit, you don't have to. You could just literally have every, everything held with your ribbon, but I just think the vellum We'll probably move around a little bit. So you can see now just sitting that one on top and just you want to obviously because I'm now up to my I've got my lid to go down but this is my top layer. Um, it's very very thick so you can see there but it's all still perfectly lined up. You can just bring it up there can you see? So you've got to really spend time making sure every single one sits perfectly together like so. Then my top piece of vellum is going to go on like so and then I'm going to show you the bottom and then put in the bottom piece on because that's already been laminated and then we can laminate the top piece here. So I'm going to attach this piece of vellum just the same way as I did. So again I'm just going to put some and glue just lie that down over the top making sure that it covers all of that pattern paper. Then I'm going to flip the whole thing over and we're going to attach the last bit of vellum that you should have is going to go on the back here exactly the same way but obviously now this is on our right hand side. So again just run your glue all the way down like so. Now if you're not laminating your top or your bottom um, you would now go and stick that bottom piece, so this piece here that you would not still score, but it won't be laminated, you'd then stick, put the glue down here and stick your back right on, like so. Okay, but because it's got, mine's protected now with this um, laminated um, plastic, 
it's just going to, I'm going to hole punch this piece of vellum and it's just going to sit on the back there and the ribbon's going to hold it in place. Like I said, I wanted the front and the, the top and the bottom, sorry, laminated just so it does keep it protected. And when I'm putting it in and out, uh, you know, like the bookcase, pulling it in and out, it's just going to, you know, just protect it that little bit more. So that's that one stuck down and that's the top one stuck down. Okay, so um, yeah, so the bottom one will sit like so. And then when you lift up your back page, so we'll get to the last one. Da, 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 da. like so it's got that vellum there and which is protecting your pictures on this back page because I don't want them sticking to that laminated um, plastic if they they won't stick to this um, vellum okay so you need to hole punch through both of these pieces this is my last bit and my punch just goes through it all just with my pokey tool there I'm just pushing those bits out because it's obviously quite thick and they're all cut nicely. And then I can just go around and just clean the edges of my little circles there. Like so. And then that's now all ready because the back, again, hole punch it before you laminate it two inches down exactly the same way. And then that is going to sit on the back. Okay, so that's nearly everything done. Now our lid. So if you want to decorate it, I've got this really nice sentiment as I showed before there. So I've popped that on top. You don't want anything too bulky because obviously you are putting this through the laminator. Um, and I'm just gonna grab one of the pouches. Okay, so make sure you've got these holes punched here. It, I mean, it doesn't matter, but it just means because this is the laminated sheet hangs over ever so slightly it will probably create about a quarter of an inch extra so you'd have to come down more um, but you would have done this hole punched it like I said with all the other pieces so you should have it hole punched really before you put it through so I'm just going to sit it in my pouch and I already want to create a nice border with the top piece here so I'm just moving it until I'm happy that it's got a nice overhang like the side piece has here you can see this bit that's already laminated obviously because it's the end I want that the same width along all of the top here and then we trim these pieces like so I'm just going to bring my laminator in which is now all ready and just feed that through obviously everybody's laminators are different just follow your instructions some you might have to have a feeder sheet that you um, pop it in as well this one can just go straight in I always push down a little bit as well just that little bit of pressure just helps I think <laughs> okay, I've so I've just run anyway. that through and I always run through run everything through twice so um, I just find that because now it's already melted the plastic the second kind of time that I put it through again it's personal preference it's just how I've always done it but I just feel it just gives it an even more secure seal okay so that's all done I'm just going to turn my machine off there and all we need to do is trim down that kind of excess so again you just want to trim it so you're giving it the same border that it has here so I'm just following I've got this metal um, kind of wire that runs down along my Fiskars trimmer um, and I'm using that as my gauge obviously you don't want to cut too close because you will break the seal and then it would obviously come back open but you could always just run it through but I can see that I've got a really nice crisp edge again just get rid of that one there so that's now my lovely laminated front and then I just need to go over now these punched holes like so and then just manipulate that fold again now it's got that plastic over it just so it just helps because once the ribbon's on obviously that but this now won't be stuck with glue because obviously it just wouldn't stick you could use red glue, red tape if you wanted to that will keep it in place but you know I don't need it to be like that so that is now going to go perfectly over the top and the bottom is going to go like so and again that just overhangs and protects just by a little bit but all those inside sheets so again like I said when I'm putting that in the bookcase the it's the laminated plastic that's going to sit on the bottom and not the paper inside here because they overhang just ever so slightly so it's just it does just protect it and gives it you know longer shelf life so with the bottom piece you want to grab your ribbon i've got this lovely fabric 
one here which is from the range comes on 12 a 12 meter roll so for a pound it's super good value for money bring it up and just make sure I've got a nice tidy flat piece on the back like so make sure I've got even sides bring that up I think that's about right yeah then grab the whole main piece pop the ribbon through all of that right like so and then and then pop this one in so like i said if you'd stuck your base and your lid you'll just be putting it all through at the same time rather than separately there we go and then we just need to tie it off so just make sure they're nice and even i find once you've tightened it you can kind of then put them into place a bit better they should all sit perfectly like it does there. Yeah, okay. Do a that. nice tidy bow there, and then I'm just These going to sides. trim. I don't want them too long, so I don't want it obviously getting all kind of messed up. And then I'm just going to, I haven't got it here, but I'm just going to, um, just with a lighter, just burn the ends there just to um, seal them. Um, but there you have it. There is a really gorgeous album. Now also if you wanted to, if you're making it even thicker, because you can, you can really, you know, really double this up, triple it up, anything you want. But you could also have that all stuck on that side with no hole punch, no ribbon, just the plain white bind. And then hole punch here and on the back and have your ribbon to close it, because obviously it'd be very thick. So there's other ways to play around with it there as well. But now you open it up, You've got the vellum on the top there because obviously that's protecting your first scrapbooking page or photos, whatever you're putting on here. And then you just work your way through and you've got all these beautiful pages all ready to do whatever you want. So great projects for giving as gifts, obviously doing for yourself, your own little scrapbooking books and also good for selling as well. But the time and the paper that's used on this, obviously, you know, could affect you the prices that you're selling it for and stuff they might you might not have success selling these um because you know they are a bit labor intensive in terms of time they're very easy to do but they do take the time to cut everything to size but yeah there you have it i'm really pleased with it complete accident how this one's come about <laughs> it's not, i don't usually tend to do projects that use so much card um but i guess my uh, travel journal that did i'll add that one in here um what other ones have i used there's a few projects I've done with a lot of card, but this is by far the, the one with the most, I think. So yeah, there you have it. I'm really pleased with it. I hope you like it. Please give me a thumbs up if you do and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.